<laughs> that was amazing. That was so fun. Howdy, cowboys yeah! and cowgirls. I'm Cowboy Jack, and I'm so excited. Do you know where we are today? Look at this. We're at South Montgomery County Fire Station. We're gonna learn all about what firefighters do to keep us safe and help us if we have something happen. I'm so excited to look at all the tools that they use to do their job. Come on, let's go take a look. Are you guys excited? I've never seen the inside of a fire station before, but today that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna meet a couple of actual firefighters and get to talk to them about how they do their job. Come on, let's go. Come on. Are you guys worn out already? We're just getting started. There's gonna be a whole lot of exciting things to see and a whole lot of exciting things to learn about. That's the important part. So we're going through the fire station gate right now. They usually keep that closed because they don't want just anybody driving up all the way to the back. But here we are, come on. Can you guys see all those fire trucks? We're gonna get to look inside them and learn all about all the tools they have on them. Come on, let's go. Hey, how's it going? Hi, nice to meet you, Cowboy Jack. This is EO. EO stands for Engineer Operator Heckendorn. So thanks for having us today. I really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. All right, so what are we looking at here? We are looking at an uh, engine. This is what the firefighters will go on to if you have a medical call, if you have a uh, wreck or fire call. We call these engines, or they will be some call, sometimes called a pumper. Um, this is engine 11-2, as you can see. 11 and a 2, this is how we identify ourselves. So if we are talking on the radio, or if they say, hey, you need to go here, we respond with engine 11 2. That is so neat. Hey, wait a second. Do you guys see something? Come here, look at this. What is that flag painted on the grill right there? Real important, we're in Montgomery County, Texas. And that's the Texas flag. Did you know Montgomery County is actually the birthplace of the Texas flag? With this engine, we have four firefighters that ride on this. And when I say we have four, we have what's called a engineer operator, which I am. I drive the uh, engine. We have a uh, lieutenant or an officer who is in charge. And then we have two firefighters in the back. But the neat thing about it is we use the ABC system. This right here is called the AC, or we call it the Alpha Seat. This is where the uh, lieutenant who is in charge, or the firefighter who's in charge, sits, and we call this the Alpha Chair. Come back here, we have what is called the Marble Chair. So we go from A to B, just like the alphabet, and so this is where a firefighter B. So if we're on the radio and we have to talk to somebody, it's Firefighter B talking to Firefighter A. If we come around the other side. This is your C seat. So just like the alphabet, you got A, B, and now we're on C. This is where another firefighter sits. So when he needs to talk to Firefighter uh, B, he goes Firefighter C to Firefighter B. And then last, but the most important, and this is my, my opinion, the uh, most fun you can have on this is the driver's seat. So this is the D seat. And it kind of corresponds because driver starts with D, so you have D now. So like I said, you have A, B, C, and D. Are you telling me that you get to drive this fire truck? Yes, I do. That is so neat. I bet it's a lot of work to drive this thing, though. Did you guys see how long this thing is? It's not a little bitty vehicle. This is a big, big, big fire truck. And inside this fire truck, we cannot see, but behind these walls, we have tools. But the neat thing about this is we have basically a 
big swimming pool inside. There's water inside here. There's water inside the fire truck? I never knew that. We carry water in here so that way we can get our job started and then we go and hook up to uh, a fire hydrant. But when this water, the big pool inside uh, runs out, then we hook into the um, fire hydrant with these big yellow hoses. So it's like a big... So it's a big water hose. Wow, that is a huge water hose. You guys see how big that opening is? That's really big. So this goes on to the fire hydrant so, and then connects to the fire truck? Yes, so this, just like a puzzle piece, see how on puzzle pieces you have different uh, shapes? Mm -hmm. You hook up, connect the two shapes together, and then you twist, and then this will twist onto this. And then the end part goes into the hydrant, which has another puzzle piece, and it's, screw, it's like a big screw, so you screw it on. Wow. So I bet it's really important. Guys, if you ever see somebody parked in front of a fire hydrant, or if you're with an adult and they're about to park in front of a fire hydrant, you need to tell them, no, no, no. You need to scoot forward and find another spot, because if there's an emergency, the firefighters need to get to those. Wow, so this is what it looks like when it's running. Yes. So it's on now and all these lights are telling you all the information you need to know about that spaghetti bowl of pipes and all the pressures of the water moving through the hoses. This, this tells me how much I have in here. So this is how much water I have. So the green lights, once it drops down to half, it'll, the green light will be there. And then when it gets down here, it will blink. So that means I am almost just like if you're vehicle, if your parents' vehicle runs out of gas, it's got that light. So it's very important as a driver that I keep water in here for the guys out there who are fighting the fire. Okay. Now, here, so you notice you have two different gauges. I see water, and then I see the word foam here. Foam. So it's basically a big sheet of bubbles that we put on to the fire. And the reason we do that is water does put fire out, but if you have cardboard, you have stuff like that, the foam will take the surface tension, the surface pressure of that item and will allow water to get inside of it. Okay, so, so you're using the foam as a mechanism to keep the water where you spray it. Yes, sir. That is so neat. It's not just all about spraying water. There's so much more that goes into it. Wow. Different, different tools for us to, to use. For example, we have extra hose. So when I said we have those lines, well, we have a little out. We have, uh, I'll show you on the back and on the side that we can hook up additional hoses to, to either get water out or in. And that's what these are for. This, Whoa, I see some really big saws. This is always one of the favorite compartments that everybody likes. This is all the fun saws to cut whatever you can cut. This big saw we use to cut through chains, uh, these big garage doors. We can cut through a, a hood of a, tr a vehicle on it. And so it has a diamond tip blade. Which oh, wow. Means it's very sharp when it comes to cut. Then we have our chainsaws. Wow, those saws are really neat and they're important tools for the firemen. This looks like another compartment with even more equipment in it. Right here, you're talking about the water. Ooh, yeah, nice ice cold bottled water. So we keep water in there. We try to drink as much water as we can. It's really important to stay hydrated. I know we talk about that in almost every episode, but it is very, very important. Your body needs water to keep feeling good, so always make sure you're drinking plenty of water. I'm gonna drink a lot right after we leave today. So we talk about safety all the time. We talk about safety and drinking water. We talk about safety, crossing the road, just anything in life. Well, just like our water, not only are we out there trying to save people, but 
But sometimes we have to save ourselves. Sometimes firefighters can get in trouble themselves. Because we go in the buildings that we have no idea what, look, what they look like. And sometimes we can get lost even though we have all the training. So this is what this bag comes in play. It's called the rent bag. So this is a firefighter's lifeline when they are trapped and out of air. So we carry this bag in with us along with all these ropes. So we have all these ropes that are called tag lines. And we carry these on and we have a bag of ropes right here. So this big rope bag That's a lot of rope. So we would tie this to something outside. For example, this. If this was outside the door, we tie this to this, we carry that rope in with us, and just like, remember I said, we have ABCs, we have math. Each ring uh, uh, corresponds as uh, 25 feet. So you know that you have one ring, 25 rings, feet, 50 feet, 75 that, feet, so okay. On, so on. And then once you hit the end of that, we have additional smaller ones that we hook up so we can come in and we can span out looking for the firefighter who needs our help. Okay. And if we come across a firefighter who needs his help, we have a bottle in here that has air. We have a mask that we will put on if he needs it. And then we turn the bottle on and this supplies breathing air to the firefighter who okay. might need it. Okay, so that's emergency air for somebody who might need it. Yes, sir. All this equipment is so big too. You gotta be really strong to be a firefighter. Remember when I was talking about the hydrants? Uh-huh. So this is what we will pull off to hook up the hydrant. So we will drop one of our firefighters off at the hydrant, he'll grab this hose, he will put it on the hydrant uh, step, hold the hose, it, the truck will drive off. The truck will drive off and it's a hundred foot um, sections of hose. So if it's 500 feet down, it'll drop off five sections, they'll, unconnect, they'll disconnect whatever it hasn't come off. And then that's where I showed you on the side of the truck, that connection, the smaller hose, well, it's the same thing, it's just a longer hose, and that's how we get our water to our, from our hydrant. So many hoses, it's such a big job just to get water to the truck. We have ladders in here. So we have actually two different ladders in here. If we pull this one out, it's a 16 foot. Whoa, that's a really long ladder. You said 16, 16 feet? feet. Wow. So if we had a one-story house, just a regular one-story house, and we had firefighters have to go up on the roof to cut the hole. This would do the job. throw one of these up so the firefighters can get up. The engineer operator, so let me, the engineer operator, you remember I said he does a lot. Mm -hmm. It's the funnest job, but he does a lot. <laughs> so for me, if, if I have, if we are what we call first in, so the first fire apparatus or the first engine on location of whatever call it is, say it's a house fire. I'm, I'm getting there, I'm getting the crew there. I have to pull what hose, whatever hose they pull, I have to make sure I have water coming in, water coming out. If I have crews going up on the roof, I usually get the ladder set up I have to throw a, which is a secondary, so two ladders, one for going up and then one for safety. Remember, here we go with safety again, everything's safe. So we have to have a second ladder up there. Sometimes we have a ladder on top of the roof so the firefighters can stand on for safety. So there's a lot going on when you're driving the truck, when, <laughs> when everything goes. So, and I'm also keeping an eye so, fire engines make all, and we'll show you in a little bit, they make all kinds of noises. 
with water flowing in them, water flowing out. And over time, you can listen and it tells you what, it's kind of like when, you're, when your dog barks. You know, he has a happy bark or a, or like a- An angry bark. bark, yeah. Well, when this is not working right, it has an angry bark. <laughs> you hear that, guys? The fire truck makes all kinds of different noises. And when you work on them for a long time, you get used to the different noises that it would make. And sometimes the fire truck is happy. And when it's not happy, it has its mad voice. And that's when you would know that something's wrong. Wait a second, I see a really cool tool that I've always wanted to see up close. Yeah. So these tools are probably the most the the most favorite ones on the upper, on the engine that everybody likes. Most people know them as the jaws of life. That's what I was gonna call it. So but they all have different names. This right here is called a spreader. So this spreads open and it can also pinch okay. so if i need to open something i can open it up and it will open up wide and then if i want to pinch for example if i need to get into this space right here and get into this door i can take those and pinch them down and it will pull this metal out so that way i can close these back up Stick them in there and then spread them out. Okay. So once I have them spread out, if I wanted to get the door from there or the door over here, then we come over to the cutters. Wow. Like angry, those are big cutters. Look at how big those crab are. Balls. That's what they look like. A big angry crab. <laughs> yeah, that's hard to say. <laughs> a, 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 tongue twister. a big angry crab claw. That's what that looks like. So you would always want to make sure that you're not putting your fingers in here or anything and staying clear. And so those open up too, and then think of it as a just a big pair of scissors. It will cut through, and then whatever. So if I needed to remove this piece right here, I can cut that on both sides over there, over there, cut it down here, cut it down there, and I can remove this whole top of the truck. Okay. That's really cool. I've always wanted to see the jaws of life up close and personal. These are, <laughs> most of them, so you'll see a lot of them with hoses. These are battery operated. That's really nice. So, so then you don't have to worry about yeah. the pneumatics of it. I'll show you how to. Wow, we're about to get to see how these actually work. Whoa, see right now it's spreading out. That spreads out really, really far, just like you said. Now it's closing back up. Wow, that's a really powerful tool and really important for a lot of different circumstances, especially in an auto accident. Here comes the cutters. Those close all the way up. And the nice thing about the battery operator one, you don't, you're not limited to the length of the hose. And you can take those and you can run them anywhere you need it. No concern about reach whatsoever. Wherever you need the tool is where you can take it. It's so great that the firemen have all these different tools to work with. I mean, there's a lot of different tools. Remember when I said it's hurricane season? Mm-hmm. So we Life jackets. For, these are our life jackets. So when we have to get out and rep, so if somebody gets stuck in the water driving or just gets stuck in the water, we put these on. We have helmets and we have these throw bags, rope again, and we go out there and we rescue whoever needs to rescue. But we have safety equipment on here. Once again, safety. So in case we get caught up, we have, of course it won't come out, but we have a knife in case we got to cut. So we get, 
tangled in vines. We have a knife to cut. Um, we have a whistle in case we get lost and they can find us. But we each firefighter has one on here. So there should be four on here. And then we have additional life vests for whoever we're going out there to save. That's important to remember. You know, a lot of times you'll hear the phrase, turn around, don't drown. Well, that's real important because if there's high water, you don't want to drive through it or get anywhere near it. You want to find high ground so you can stay out of the water altogether so the firemen don't have to risk their lives to come save you. All right, guys, well, they're going to pull the fire truck out so we can see all the different lights and even the horn on it. It's going to be really fun. Let's take a look at it driving. All right, here it comes. Look at all of those lights. It's got a ton of lights. Wow. Did you guys hear that horn? That was really, really loud. Wow. Whoa. It was letting out the brakes there. You want to get in there and do the uh, fun part? Yeah. Uh, You want to climb up there? You can climb up there. Okay. So, <coughs> right here, you have what is a brake for us. So you have a brake down there and a brake there. So when we pull that yellow brake, it you heard that air, man. Yeah. That's what locks all this in place. Okay. You have an air ride system up here, so your seat goes up and down and does all kinds of good stuff there. Yeah, we have a steering wheel here, but if you pull that white string, uh -huh. that's the phone call. All right, guys, they said I could blow the horn, so I'm going to pull. You see this white cord right here? That's going to blow the really loud horn. Here it goes. Whoa! That was amazing. That was so fun. It sounded really, really loud, and that's important. So whenever the engineer operator is driving and he needs people to move out of the way, he can pull that and tell people, hey, I need to get by. That was really cool. Wow. If you look up in here, there's so many buttons and things that they have to pay attention to. Let me just show you real quick. I mean, it looks like a normal car right here. But you see, if you look up, there's all these different gauges and buttons, and there's a couple of radios, all kinds of horns, and radio equipment for dispatch, and I don't even know what all this stuff does. There's so much to see. It's a really tough job trying to learn how to drive one of these. Wow, I'm glad we have good professionals to take care of it. <laughs> that was really cool to look around in. I feel like I'm way up real high because these fire trucks are really tall. I'm going to get down. It's got all these handles so you can be safe while you're stepping down. That was really, really high. I mean, take a look at it. Okay, so we talk about this a lot. Cowboy Jack's about six feet tall from wearing my boots, okay? This thing has got to be at least 10, 12 feet tall. It's really, really big. <laughs> look at all these great lights all over it. Come out the front here. Wow. It's got these red lights and the regular white lights. All these different lights all around. Did you look up top at those lights? Those are really, really big. And over here on the top, what color of light do you see there? Yeah, it's green. And there's all these other lights running all along the side of the truck. It is just so, so huge. There's even a lot of lights here on the back. If you look at the back, whoa, whoa. It's kind of hard to even look at because it's so bright. But these let people know to stay back and stay safe because they have a big, important job to do. All right, well, now that we've seen all about the fire trucks and all the equipment that they have, let's take a look inside the fire station because like he told us earlier, they basically live here 24 hours at a time. So he starts at six o'clock in the morning and then finishes his day at six o'clock in the morning again the next day. That's a long time to be at work. So you gotta have a comfortable place to hang out while you're here. Come on, let's go check it out. Whoa, so this is like a living room right here. Yes, this is where 
like you said, we need a comfortable spot to hang out. This is where we hang out when we're not outside. I tell you what, you guys got a good air conditioning in <laughs> yes. here. It feels really nice inside. So we come in here, we relax, watch TV. Sometimes we even put a training video on there and, and sit in the air conditioning and not outside. Wow. I am bet it's nice to have a good place to cool off after a long, hard day, especially after a difficult call where you've been out in the sun a long time. All right, so this must be like your dining table. Yes, this is our dining room. So in a fire station, it has basically a, an open concept. So open concept, that's cool. open. So when you come in, it's you come into, like you said, our living room, then we have our dining room, and then we'll work our way to our kitchen. It's open concept for because this is also even though this is our home away from home it's also a public building so anytime the public can come you have to keep it open and, and simple and i guess comfortable for them to come in i bet with all these different firefighters working here it's important to keep it nice and clean so you don't you know, get in any clean. arguments with each other <laughs> morning we clean during the day and then we do what's called the evening clean so this floor gets swept and mopped probably twice a day i would say this floor looks really really clean you could probably eat a meal right off of it i wouldn't want to <laughs> but i'm saying it looks like you could <laughs> i don't want to bug these guys too much i know they live here on their time and they have an actual kitchen so they can cook their meals and get good nourishment. Just because you're away from home doesn't mean you have to eat fast food all the time, even though I'm sure you do sometimes. So we try to cook breakfast, lunch, and dinner here. So... Is it like every man for himself or do we no, cook in family style? We, we, we're family style. Uh, so do you pick who's a good cook and let him focus or does everybody have to cook? Or we just get the lowest guy uh, on the totem pole and let him figure it out and then if he doesn't do it then then the guy who cooks steps in <laughs> so, that wouldn't be good for cowboy jack i'm not a very good cook but that's why i have my wife who's a really good cook <laughs> but this is where when we have free time whoa wait a second you guys have a full gym in here this is great we have a <clears throat> weight room we have where we can do our cardio so we can keep our uh, lungs in shape. We have weights so where we can, you know, oh, you saw, we have to pick up the ladder, we have to pick up the tools. There's a lot of equipment to pick up that's real heavy. So we come in here and we have all this and we try to work out what we can, but sometimes we're in a workout and then we have to go to emergency. And then we come right back and we try to pick up on the workout and then sometimes you go right back on emergency. So Workout sometimes we don't want to overdo it because then you don't want to. You don't want to be too tired that you can't be effective on your call. I mean, you guys have some really big weights here. Look at these numbers. This is 70, 70, 80. That's 80 pounds. I bet I could. <laughs> we'll leave that up to the firefighters. Cowboy Jack's not even strong enough to pick that up. <laughs> wow, this was so neat to get to look at the gym. So where does a firefighter sleep? So each firefighter has a room. Whoa, this looks just like a bedroom. Yes. This happens to be the room I'm in. So we have a bed. Um, I have a, my bathroom over here has a shower. I have, uh, once again, three closets. So I have A, B, and C. So when A shift uh, lieutenant's on, he uses this closet, B, and so on. Okay. Wow, so this is home when you're not at home. Yes, and we have TVs. I probably, I don't even think I ever turn it on. <laughs> by the time I get in here. By the time you get in here, you probably want to go to bed. <laughs> then on this side, you have a hallway, and the other firefighters, they have these rooms. So they're a little bit smaller, but again, you have, you have closets here. And then we have these two rooms have a, a adjoining bath and shower. Wow. So this this room and the room next door shares this shower and this bath to kind of save on the space. That was so neat to get to look around the inside of the fire station where all the firefighters have to stay and they basically live for 24 hours at a time like we already talked about. So where I'm taking you now, all the gear that we wear 
when we're not on duty or working has to be stored in a room. And it's like a big locker. Well, it's basically, that's what it is, is a big locker room. Wow, it does look like a big locker room so in here. Everybody has their own locker. And again, it's done by the shift. So you have A, B, and C. So you have each firefighter. And the way you tell what a firefighter's rank is, is usually is by their helmet. So, for example, this is a brand new rookie firefighter and it's orange. So when we're out there and we see orange, we know he's a new firefighter. Okay, so that's what a rookie is, somebody who's new to the fire yes. department. And then you have your firefighters and your engineer helmets, which is what I wear and they're they're black with white front. And this one says engineer, he's a driver. A firefighter will say firefighter. And that's how you tell the difference between that. Okay. And then lieutenants, a lieutenant who is a lieutenant wears a red helmet. And so he has a red helmet and it will say a South Carolina lieutenant and it has their name on it. That's how you tell. Now, I told you I was riding a lieutenant today, but I'm an engineer, so I stick with Your my helmet. Your helmet looks like that. Yes. Hey, wait a second. Do you guys see that name? That says Matt Sharp. I think I know Matt Sharp. That's Brayton's daddy. Hey, Matt, how's it going? Sorry, I didn't touch any of your stuff. Don't worry. <laughs> wow, this locker room is really neat. And like we talked about, all this gear is so important to the job that they do. They have to come in here and grab this stuff and get ready to go out on an emergency call. Before we leave, I wanted to tell you, thank you for everything you do for us and thank you for keeping us safe. Thank I you. really appreciate it. It's so great that they come to work and do what they do every day to make sure that we get to have fun and be safe. And if something bad happens, they come to help us out as quick as they can. It's so great. All right, well, thanks for having us again. Bye. Uh, Howdy, cowboys and cowgirls. I'm Cowboy Jack, and today I'm so excited. I don't know if you see where we're at, but we're at ESD 11. That's Emergency Service District 11 in Harris County, Texas. Well, that's a lot of big words. What does that mean? That means this is where they keep all of the ambulances and all of the paramedics every day that work in ESD 11 come here to check in and get their ambulances. They said we could come in and even take a look around their brand new ambulances. You guys wanna check that out? Come on, let's go. Wow, see, I told you we're at ESD 11. Harris County ESD Emergency Services District 11 Mobile Healthcare. This is a really big ambulance. Sometimes they might call it a box or a cruiser or a lot of other different names. But anyway, we're gonna get to look all around this. It's gonna be so exciting. Whoa, hey guys, look, this is Paramedic Price. Hi. Hey, Paramedic Ishak. Hey, how are you? Wow, these guys are real life superheroes. If you had an accident or something, these would be the guys that show up to help you right on the scene. Wow, it's so great that we're here with you today. Thanks for having us. Oh, thanks for coming. We're great to meet you. I'm so excited. So can you show me all about this big ambulance? Absolutely. Wow. So this is an ambulance, right? This is an ambulance. You're right. That's so cool. Hey, I see it has a lot of wheels on it, just like most cars. I see one, two, and then one up there. So that makes this three wheels per side. If you have three wheels per side, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six wheels in total. Wow, well back here it looks like a regular ambulance, but up here it looks like a regular vehicle. That's so neat. I mean, you know, Cowboy Jack drives an F-150. This, this here is an F-450. That means it's a lot bigger. Can we take a look in the driver's seat? Absolutely, sir. Whoa. You guys see that? That's incredible. Wow, it looks like there's a whole lot of big important tools in there. That is so, so cool. Hey, I'm gonna sit in the driver's seat like I'm driving the ambulance. This is gonna be a lot of fun. 
Whoa. All right, wow, I'm sitting in this ambulance just like I'm driving it. And there's so many different buttons and things. So what do all these buttons do? So, Cowboy Jack, right over here, these are the buttons that handle the lights on the outside. And these buttons right here are actually the sirens that we have. Whoa. Um, there's something that's called a howler, and that's a special button that when we're driving along and we need to make sure somebody knows something in front of us, that they kind of see us a little more, we'll hit this and for seven seconds, it'll give a little rumble that they'll feel all the way. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then here's a air horn over to the left there. There's a little button that your foot can press that'll hit that air horn. I see that button. Can yes. I push it and Please. see what it sounds Let's like? Let's see what's going on. You guys want to see what an air horn sounds like? This is going to be a lot of fun. Whoa! That was really loud. That's crazy. But that's an important tool of an ambulance because a lot of times people don't know that an ambulance is coming up behind them and they need to move out of the way so they can get where they're going quickly. So you use the air horn as one of those tools. That's it. You want to go ahead and turn our lights on? Absolutely. So which button do I so press? So we're going to hit the emergency master button first. There we go. Whoa. Guys, look at the lights on the outside. That is so neat. And there's a whole lot of lights and we're gonna get to look at all of them in just a minute. Wow. That's right. Uh, now we can hit, do you wanna hear what the sirens sound like? Of course we wanna hear what the siren sounds like. Okay, go ahead and hit one and two. At the same time? At the same time. All right, here goes siren one and two. Whoa. There you go. All right, that was so cool. I'm so glad we got to look around inside here. It's a big, important job driving an ambulance. I bet you have to keep your head on a swivel all the time. You have to be really careful, right? Because what we're doing tends to kind of interrupt people or it kind of uh, can scare them if they're not paying a lot of attention. Yeah. So we have to pay attention to ourselves and we have to pay attention to everyone else around us. So you're right, we have to really focus on how we're driving and how everyone else is driving around us. Cowboys and cowgirls driving is already kind of a scary job. There's a lot of things you have to take account for. But when you're trying to get somewhere in a hurry so you can address an emergency, it's an even more important job. I'm so glad you guys have these amazing tools at your disposal. This is great. Thank you. All right. Boy, that was exciting. I've never been inside an ambulance before. And look at all these amazing lights. Here we've got, we've got all kinds of colors. I can't even keep it straight. We've got white lights, we've got red lights. There's blue lights up there. This is so cool. So is this that air horn? That is part of the air horn. I'm sorry, the air horn's on the bottom. Oh, That's part of the that. siren right there. There's the air horn. Yeah, it'd have to be really big. It made a big, big noise. Wow. This ambulance is so neat. There's so many things on it. Wow, even more lights on this side. Guys, you see what that is right there? One of my personal favorites, the great state of Texas. Wow, okay, you see this sticker right here? It looks backwards, but that's so the driver can see it in his mirrors. It's, we're gonna read it backwards. It says, caution, vehicle height, 10 feet, four inches. Now, why would it be important for the driver to know how tall a vehicle is? Well, a lot of times there's underpasses and you might have to go underneath a railroad bridge or some other things. So you want to make sure that it's at least 10 feet, probably 10 feet, eight inches to go under safely. All right. There's all these different compartments. Hey, can we see what it looks like inside? Of course. So wow. this has our CPR equipment here. Uh, there's some additional uh, equipment on the top shelf. And this is a hybrid ambulance, so we do have a couple of batteries to serve as backup to our power system. Wow, so that's good. So the ambulance doesn't use as much gas. That's correct. Does this ambulance run on gasoline or diesel? Uh, this ambulance runs on gas as well as a battery system. This is such a huge vehicle and it runs on gas and it's a hybrid, so that means it's very efficient. That's so cool. So you said this is a CPR device. What is CPR? CPR is cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Can you hear that? Cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Say that five times fast. I'm just kidding, you can't. That's a really big word. What does CPR mean? So CPR is something that we performed uh, manually for years, which is when somebody's heart stops, we push on their chest to get their heart working again. Okay, but this machine does that work for you. That's correct. That's so cool. Boy, isn't technology great? Wow, that's a really cool compartment. 
and we've got even more lights. And just like every vehicle, it's got an exhaust pipe down here. Wow. So there's a lot of information on an ambulance. You have everything from the district that it comes from, what it is, the website that you could find out about it, but then you also have important information like call 911 for an emergency. That's important. If you ever have a bad emergency, you need to remember to call 911. You never want to call them unless it's really, really bad. And if you call them by accident, don't just hang up the phone. You stay on and say, I'm sorry, I called by accident. So that way they know there's not an emergency and they don't rush over to try and help you when there's nothing to help. All right, well, can we see the inside of an we ambulance? Can. All right, so we're going to see some of the tools they use inside the ambulance. I mean, there's a lot of things that happen when an ambulance comes to a scene. They have a lot of a big, important job to do, and we're going to get to see how they do that. So we're going to open up the back, and when we do, you're going to see this ambulance will drop down. You guys see that? Wow, that was really neat. I mean, before he opened the doors, it was up here. And then as soon as he opened the doors, it lowered down. What's the point of that? So that actually keeps it safe. This stretcher goes in and out and the wheels will touch down. This just brings it closer to the ground so that people are safer when they're going in the ambulance and coming out of the ambulance. Okay, that's really cool. So whenever you need to get up in there, it's lower to the ground. It's kind of like right now we've got a low rider ambulance. That's really cool. That's it. Now we'll pull the stretcher out. Wow, that looks like it's on some kind of device. It is. So this is called an auto lift, and this is our stretcher right here. So it goes, this is a stretcher. This is wow. a stretcher, sir. Now, are you ready to see how this comes out? Sir, paramedic check. Oh my goodness, this is like all automated there's so many electronic parts to it that's really great it is it actually helps out a great deal for anybody who may be really tall or a little bit heavy huh? this is perfect for them i think cowboy jack checks both of those boxes <laughs> well you know what why don't we really check cowboy jack you got, what do you mean how about you lay on our stretcher let us go ahead and put you on the stretcher and show you what it looks like in the back well that would be really cool because guys, I mean, a stretcher can be kind of a scary thing, but we're going to see that it's really not that scary. I'm going to get on here just like you would if you had some kind of emergency. And we're going to see what all this is all about. Okay. So what do I do? Just lay on there? Yeah, just have come over here, turn over, have a seat. Let's all right. Keep those legs up. All right. Are you we're comfortable? You wow. Well, you know what? This actually feels pretty nice. Hey, guys, just, just give me one minute. Give me one minute. I'm sure. just going to. There you go. Oh. <laughs> okay, all right, not a good time for a nap. We're gonna go ahead and learn about this stretcher, okay? <laughs> okay, so here's a seat belt, sir. A seat this belt. is gonna come across, and okay. we're going to... Look at that, there's a buckle right here. Is this That's the right it. one? That's the right one. Huh. Excellent. Okay, so we're gonna kind of tighten this up right here so okay. that we don't, uh, we don't let you move off the stretcher while we're moving. Well, that is so cool. I mean, I feel all buckled in. That, yes, sir. There's one more. One more. It's kind of like being in a race car. Oh, that is like a race car. I've never got to be in a race car before, but this is really neat. Well, there we go. Now you're nice and secure. We're going to pull up that other side. And we're going to let you into the back of the ambulance. Okay, sir. Whoa. See, this is what would happen if you were in an emergency situation. They might put you in this stretcher, or if you're a little bit smaller, they have a special chair for little guys. But it's all basically the same concept. You're strapped in and secure so they can move you. That's it. Okay. Okay. We're going to go for we're a little go. ride up. <laughs> wow, that's really neat. Yes, sir. All right. Go up a little more. That's perfect. Whoa. I mean, this is almost like a roller coaster. So we have another robot friend that works with us. It's called the auto loader. It's going to raise you up and bring you inside the ambulance. A robot's going to put me inside the ambulance. That's so cool. One hand. Wow. That is so neat. So here I am inside the ambulance. 
this is really unique. I've never been inside an ambulance. This looks really cool. I mean, there's a lot of tools and a lot of really great things to look at. All right. Wow. So Cowboy Jack, welcome to the back of the ambulance. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. So I feel here, like you gave me the best seat in the house. You know, you do have the best seat. <laughs> That's so great. Because everything is focused on you right now. When you're in the back of the ambulance with us, we're always here focused on you. Okay. And from this point, we can sit over here. We have all of our equipment, all of the things that we can help take care of you if you're ill or if you're injured. Um, so if you happen to have been in a car accident, you know, you would be here on the stretcher and we would just be able to find the different pieces of equipment uh, to sit there and help you with whatever. I'm going. sorry. I feel like my head is spinning. I'm just looking all around at all of this unique gear and all these tools that you have to do your job. I don't know how you keep it all straight. Well, the good thing is this organization where we work. We have everything that has labels and everything has its purpose. So over on this side, you know, if you're sick um, and uh, you have a fever, we have specific kits and, and ways to be able to treat you for your fever over on this one. Whoa. In the middle, if you were in an accident, like a car accident, we have some things that treat the car accident. Wow. And each bin is specific to something <clears throat> that happens. It sounds like ESD-11 really has their stuff together when it comes to taking care of people in an emergency situation. They, they really do. They've spent a lot of time, they really think about this, and they find the best way to be able to help the community. Well, that's really great for the folks that live here in ESD-11. And no matter where you live, the ambulances are here to help you and take care of you the fastest way possible while they get you to a hospital if that's the thing that needs to happen. If it doesn't need to happen, they'll do everything they can to take care of you and get you where you need to go. It's really cool. Absolutely. So from here, you know, we would go ahead and take care of you. And then my partner, paramedic Ishak, would go up front and he would start driving to the hospital. All right, guys. Well, this was so neat to get to see all the tools and equipment that paramedics have at their disposal in case of an emergency. I mean, I've never been on a stretcher before, and I'm here to tell you, I'm your buddy, Cowboy Jack. There is absolutely nothing scary about this. It's actually really exciting. I mean, there's a lot of things going on, and even though you might be in pain, these guys that are here with you, these paramedics, their sole focus is to take care of you, make sure you're comfortable and taken care of, and that any kind of injury that you have is being addressed while you get to where you need to go. So absolutely no reason to be concerned or scared. It's whenever you're here on the stretcher, you're kind of in their control. So you need to just lay back and it's really comfortable. Just lay back, relax, and let them do their jobs because they're doing everything they can to make sure you get to feeling good as quickly as possible again. Yes, sir. Wow. So, Combo Jack, we're at the hospital, so we got to offload you now. We're going to do the same thing, just in reverse. Okay. Okay. Boy, I'm ready for the other side of this roller coaster. This is going to be a lot of fun. All right, guys, here right. I go. Wow. I mean, that's very unique because here I am hanging off of the edge and it kind of felt like maybe I would fall, but that robot has got me really protected. It sure does. And now you're nice and safe. I feel up really tall too. <laughs> Let's turn you around here. Whoa, that was really fun. Hey guys, see, like I said, they can get you in and out of the ambulance really easily and really safely with the help of that ro robotic arm there. And of course, these guys are here to make sure nothing bad would ever happen. It's so neat. All right, well, now that we're out of the ambulance, it's time to get up. Okay. So what do we do now? We're gonna go down towards the ground. Whoa. Nice and easy. Now that we're there, we're gonna unbuckle our seat belts. Okay, you want me to just take these chest straps That off? would be great, sir. Whoa. See, now I'm unstrapped and I can go ahead and get up. Wow. I mean, that was a really relaxing time. I actually feel rested now. All right, cowboys and cowgirls, let's watch them put this back up now that I'm off of it. Wow, look at that robotic arm there coming up to secure it. There's so many moving parts. Cowboy Jack, you ready to take a call with us? Absolutely, let's take a call. What does that mean? We're gonna go help somebody. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Let's go help somebody. All right, so this is the radio? 
That's really cool. Hmm. How does the radio look on my vest? <laughs> wow, this was so exciting getting to see all about the ambulance. And now we're gonna actually get to go on a call. We're just waiting to see if there's an emergency that we can respond to. <laughs> so Combo Jack, we have these radios where our dispatchers are gonna call us when they need help uh, or someone has called for help. Wow, so that kind of looks like a cell phone, but it has this thing on it. That's correct. So this has both capabilities. We have our radios, the traditional radios, the walkies on here, as well as uh, being able to make cell phone calls on here. Wow, that's really cool. That's a very unique piece of equipment, but a very important part of the job. So this is how dispatch calls you and tells you anywhere you need to go, wherever there's an emergency. So it tells us the information about the call, uh, what the problem may be, um, and where the problem and where the accident has taken place, as well as directions from the GPS. Wow, that's a powerful tool. That's really neat. Yep. And it will give us turn-by-turn -turn directions to wherever we're going so we can come find you very quickly. Huh. I just need to fix... Hey! They're always laughing at my hair. That's not fair. Okay, I'll put my hat back on. All right. Well, wow, isn't that neat? This radio has all these tools on it. I mean, we shouldn't even call it a radio. We should call it the nerve center of an EMS. Yep. <laughs> That's so cool. So uh, they should be calling you here in a minute, and we'll find out what we have to go to. All right. Well, what do we do when we're waiting on a call? So when we're waiting on a call, we're usually training. Uh, we're reviewing all our protocols and all our procedures. We're oh. going over our equipment, make sure that it's in good working order. Wow. I, I bet that is a big important part of the job because you're constantly using your tools. But as we always say, whenever you use a tool, no matter what kind of tool it is, it's important to put it back in its right place. That way you can find it the next time, right? That's correct. That wouldn't be a whole lot of fun if your partner were to put your tools up in a different spot and then when you needed them, you couldn't find them. Yeah, and it's really nice to have them organized and in bins and labeled and all the dates are checked on all our medications to make sure that we're using top quality stuff. I didn't even think about that. You guys have to carry a lot of medications on the ambulance as well. So Cowboy Jack, uh, we didn't get to show you, but as you were on the stretcher, we have a hidden compartment here that has both a refrigerator and a heater that stores medications. Oh wow, I guess some medicines need to be kept cold and some need to be kept hot. That's correct. I didn't even think about some medicines needing to be kept hot. That's really unique. Wow, guys, go look at that. So this side is 89 degrees, that's our heater. This side is 45 degrees, and that's our cooler. And we have them in locked compartments to keep the medication safe and secure and at the right temperature. Wow, that is so unique. I mean, this, this is like a house. I mean, there's literally everything you could ever need right here at your disposal. And that's so important because whenever you get an emergency call, they don't know what kind of emergency it is. They don't know exactly what they're gonna be dealing with. They gotta be ready for anything. Wow, that is so cool. And I love these doors, how they open and close like that. And let's see this one more time. When we close these doors, it's gonna raise up. Whoa, see it coming up? Right now it's at the top of my boot. Here it comes. That is so cool. Wow. And I bet they do that with an airbag system. That's how lowriders do it. <laughs> hey, what's that up there? So this is one of our cameras that shows us the back of the ambulance. Oh. Uh, so when we're backing up at the hospital bays, we'll use that camera as well as a person standing outside to make sure that we come into the bay safely. Okay. And that we don't hit any objects or hit anybody that may be crossing behind us. That's important because this is a gigantic box and you can't always see where you're driving it. So they have all these cameras outside to make sure that they don't hit anything. Wait a second, guys. Did you hear that? They called me. Hello? This is Cowboy Jack. Cowboy Jack, we're going to need you to respond to an unknown problem. You're going to need Cowboy Jack to respond? Hey, Cowboy Jack, we need you to respond. I'm a paramedic eye shot. 
Okay then, me and paramedic Ishak are on the job. All right, they need us, let's go. All right. Papa Jack, you need your seatbelt, sir. Okay, yes, sir. Thank you. Let me buckle in. All right, I'm buckled in. Driver's seat. Okay. All right, guys, this is exciting. We're going on a call. All right, now you need to buckle in, too. Yes, sir. <laughs> This is so exciting. I've never been on a call before. So Cabo Jack, this is an emergency situation. Do you know how to turn the lights on? You showed me, but I need a refresher. Okay. Which... So we're gonna hit that switch there that says emergency master on it. Okay, emergency master emergency going start. on. So we should have all our lights activated. I have my seatbelt on, you have your seatbelt on. We I know do. where we're going. So here we go. All right. And you know how to activate the siren? I do. Okay, let's do it. Okay. All right, guys, well, we're headed out to our call. This is going to be so fun. So, Cabo Jack, when we're driving, we have to make sure everybody sees us as well as hears us on the road, other drivers. So we will use our air horn as well as our sirens. And so you use these switches to interact with the public when you're driving to let them know that you're trying to get somewhere in a hurry. Yes, that's correct. That's our form of communication out to the other drivers on the road to let them know that we're coming through. Wow, that is really, really cool. I'm really glad that you have those tools to make sure everybody knows Hey, there's an ambulance coming and we're, we're trying to get to an emergency in a hurry. Yes, it does help us safely cross through a lot of high traffic areas, um, but we do have to be very careful at the intersections. Um, sometimes they're four and six lanes across, so we do have to use an extreme amount of caution. And here we are. All right. Well, that was so much fun. Thank you for taking me for a ride. My pleasure, Cabo Jack. Thank you for coming with us. Absolutely. So, hey, Paramedic Ishak, I keep seeing this button, and I don't know what that means. Opticom. What is that? Great question. So this is, as you said, another way that we communicate with people on the road. When this button is pressed, uh, there's a system in place in Harris County that signals the red lights up ahead for us and changes them to green so we can safely go through the intersections. Um, and it stops the traffic in the other direction. It turns those lights red. Wow, so it gives you like a, a, a free a, or a clearer path to get to where you're going in a hurry. Yes, and we'll use that when we have a, a critically sick person. We'll use that to get to the hospital quicker as well as uh, get to the scene quicker. Wow, that's really cool. I'm so glad that you have that tool. So, hey, I'm getting a call. Okay. This is Cowboy Jack. Jack, we show you guys on scene. Yes, sir, we are here on scene. Excellent. All right, well, that means that's confirmation that we were arrived to our destination. So I guess we ought to just go ahead and get out. Sure. All right. Boy, thank you for showing me that. That was so fun. Oh, it's my pleasure. All right. Wow, well, pretending to be a paramedic was so much fun, but I'm glad that you guys do it. I mean, I don't actually know what I'm doing, but you guys let me pretend like I knew what I was doing so that we could show everybody at home what it's like in the day of the life of what it is you do every day. Yes, sir. So I guess I got to give you your cool tools back. Yeah, unfortunately. All right. Well... Hey, it was fun while it lasted. <laughs> you did a great job, though, and we want to thank you for coming. Oh, well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Wasn't this so much fun? And remember, this is an, another important thing. Whenever you see somebody in uniform like this, these paramedics work really hard to keep not only you and I safe, but everyone else. And so whenever we see them, we want to make sure we tell them thank you for doing what you do. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Cowboy Jack. Thank you, Cowboy All Jack. right. 
All right, guys. Well, we're going to get out of your hair, but thank you so much for showing us your awesome tools and uh, your amazing job that you do every day. Thanks thank thank for riding with us. All right. We'll see you later. All right, cowboys and cowgirls. Boy, have we had an adventure today. It was so much fun getting to see all the way around the ambulance and all the tools and equipment they have for paramedics to do their jobs. I mean, I want to give a real special thank you to our friends at Harris County ESD 11. And like we learned, ESD stands for Emergency Services District. They were so nice and generous to let us come here and learn all about the tricks of the trade and what they do every day to help keep people safe and get to them in a real emergency situation. We've had a great time. So make sure if you had a fun time today to click subscribe on Cowboy Jack and that way you can come on all of our adventures because we put out an adventure every single week and you never know what we're going to do. We like to do all kinds of stuff. All right, cowboys and cowgirls. Well, until next time. Yeah!